Hello, welcome to part 5 of this Hex Beginners tutorial series. In this video, we're going to have a look at strings and some basic input and output to the user. So what is a string? Well, a string is a data type like integers and floats, which we've covered already. But those can be used to represent numbers. A string can be used to represent a list of characters. So, for example, we've actually already used a string before when we traced hello world in the first video this is actually a string inside of these um, brackets and as you can see the, the string has quotes around it and this is how we declare a string so if we wanted to create a new string let's just say we wanted to store someone's name and we can have any sort of character so numbers, punctuation marks or anything else so we can also add this if we want it's not necessary. So we use double quotes, but we can also use single quotes. And there is one difference between these that we'll have a look at later on. But for now, they're pretty much interchangeable. Just know that if you start a string with double quotes, you have to end it with double quotes. So this would give an error because the string isn't completed. And the same is the case the other way around. So if we start, we can't end with a double quote. And this is actually something we can use when we want to use an apostrophe inside of a string or to have um, double quotes. We just use the opposite one. So this would actually, this actually works because this doesn't close the string, it's just a character inside of the string. There are other ways we can get around our strings closing when we don't want them to, but we'll look at those later on. So we'll just change this to that. So now we have a string and we can reference this. We're actually going to run our program in the terminal. For some reason I was having problems with, with um, Visual Studio so some of the stuff that we're going to do today doesn't really work for some reason uh it's probably just a problem with the fact that we're using this we're running in interpreter mode so if you're using a different target it should be fine i think you might not even have any problems but if you are then if you just write this yourself so we're just going to write hacks build HXML and this just runs the build file just manually. I wouldn't recommend that you do this on a bigger project because we're not using the um, compilation server so when we actually generate the code it might take a bit longer but because this is a small project I don't think you'd have the problem unless you're using um, the interp flag. So Let's just run this. As you can see, we've we've traced out John. So up until now, we've been tracing stuff to the console using the trace function. However, this is just what we use when we're in the process of developing our program, and we want to quickly just check something to make sure it's the right value or to see what it is. We wouldn't actually want to use this if we want to print something out to the user. There's a, actually an option in the hex compiler to completely remove all trace functions from your whole project. And you do this by adding the a new flag, so dash dash no traces to the build.hxml file. And this means that wherever the compiler sees a trace, it will just completely ignore it. So if we run this again, it doesn't actually trace anything up. So this is really only used for debugging and you can easily remove them from your program. So if we actually wanted to print something out to the user, we'd use something else. And that's called the sys class and that stands for system. A class is something that we'll look at later on in more depth, but for now just think of it as a as a collection of functions that do kind of similar things. So to print something out, 
we type sys and then dot and then after this w type the function that we want to execute from the sys class and the one we want to use is print so let's type in name and now if we run our code as you can see we've we've printed out john now if we do this again and we build it as you can see we've we've printed john out twice but you might expect it to to have printed it out on two separate lines but instead it prints them out right next to each other so what we can do is if we wanted to have a string that has multiple paragraphs so we want to actually split the lines we can put a new line inside of the string so we can do slash n and that's a backslash by the way and now if we build this and as you can see the string actually has a new line inside of itself so we can type stuff after this it has it actually has the new line inside of the string however if we just want to tell it print this out and then straight after it put a new line and we don't really want to worry about that then we can just do instead of print we change this to print ln which stands for print line and now if we build it as you can see the new line is automatically put in after the string so if we run this twice then it will start a new line after each one so that's how we print something to the console so now we're going to have a look at taking an input from the user so we let's say we want to write a program where we ask the user what their name is and then we want to store it as a variable and then print it back out to them so first of all we're going to create a new variable and call it question and this is just going to say enter your name and then semicolon and then sys.print line and we'll just print the question to them this is what we had before if we build this now as you can see the program ends and we go back to the terminal before we can actually type in our name so to actually type in our name we have to create a way of accessing this terminal so that we can read from it and the way we do this is we create a new variable and we'll just call it console input we we have to set this to sys.stdn and this just creates a variable and we can we can you can name this whatever you want by the way but now we can access the console input through this variable so let's say that we want to get what the user entered from from the console input we can type var name and then and the value we want for this is console input and then read line and what this um, does is it waits for the user to press enter and only then does it collect that of what they typed in so if we run this as you can see the program's pause now so we have we actually have time to enter something so let's say that our name is john and as you can see we can freely type whatever we want and only once we press enter does it continue the program so now let's create a another line here so we're just going to say sys.print and then we'll just print out the name just to show that we've stored it and now if we run this we type in jeremy as you can see it prints it back out to us so now um, we're going to have a quick look at something else that you can do with strings and that is if we use single quotes we can say things like your name is and then we can actually access variables from our code and it will take the value of the variable and put it inside of the string the way we do this is we use the dollar sign and then we say name 
So as you can see, this turns white and it will take whatever the value of name is and put it inside. This only works with single quote strings. This is the feature I was talking about before. That's only available with them. And you, I can show you this if we run it. And we say our name's John. It, as you can see, it says your name is John. And this is put inside of the string. And we can have multiple variables inside of here. We can say, we can access this again and say, we can say John is a cool name. And if we run this, we can use as many of these as we want. So they're quite cool. You can use them to format your strings and put um, anything inside of them. We can even put an integer inside of here and it will automatically change it into a string. So if we say var number is equal to 10 and then here we just we just put num at the end even though this is a uh, an integer we can still show it in the string so that's a cool thing that you can do with um single quote strings so that's pretty much it for this video i hope you found it useful if you did please leave a like if you have any more questions feel free to ask in the comments and if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see a tutorial on, please feel free to leave it in the comments. So subscribe to see more of these videos and I'll see you in the next one.